Ex-prisoners of Reddit, who was the strangest person you met in prison? I had a cellmate I'll call Honest Abe, because he had that style of beard. This jail had payphones in some of the cells. Ours had one and one day Abe gets off the phone, and he looks worried. After an hour he starts pacing. When you're locked in a concrete closet this gets old way fast. Finally I have to break the rule, and ask what his deal is. Turns out AB's a meth manufacturer of a sort. More of meth tutor. Rather than make the dope himself he would teach you to source chemicals, acquire cooking paraphernalia, and teach you to cook some good dope. Then Abe gets X amount of dope from the first few batches to pay his fees. This kept him off the feds radar for quite a while, because the feds were mostly chasing the cooks. By the time a cook showed up on feds radar Abe has been paid off, and is out of the picture. What Abe was nervous about is his whole don't wanna go to jail scheme was to befriend a kind Christian woman, and have her advocate for him to the judge and feds. The feds weren't buying it, and got a search warrant, because Abe was living quite well for a modest man. They had found an army ammo box stuffed with stacks of cash that had been plastic wrapped. Abe admitted in a very low voice, that he had pretty reliable knowledge, that there were no fingerprints on the plastic sheet, but thought there might be on the outside of the box. He was wondering how long fingerprints were good for, if the box was out in 100 degree weather, with 100% humidity, stuffed in a rotting log for 6 months would still be usable. I told him I didn't think so, but had never known anyone to seriously piss off the D. They might be able to. Abe thanked me by writing me up a recipe for meth, so I could make my own. I flushed it, and never used it. Haven't done meth in 22 years. Not a prisoner, but used to work with a guy called Dangerous Brian, who had recently got out of jail for manslaughter. He told us that it was actually premeditated murder, but the prosecutor didn't have enough evidence. He had a scar the length of his torso where he'd been ripped open with a knife during a dispute over drugs. As soon as he could walk he went straight to the where the guy who stabbed him lived and killed him. Foreman of our work crew, Scooby, had shared a cell with Brian. Which was how he got hired. Brian had a lax attitude to health and safety. I was on a scaffold. Needed a hammer. Asked him for one. So he threw it to me. Like Thor. It embedded in the wall an inch or two from my head. I last saw Brian in the early hours of the morning at the end of a heavy night of drinking slash coke slash hash. Running down the street to a parked cop car. The cops were dealing with a shop alarm or something. Had left the car with lights flashing on the street. He jumped on the back of the car, and started punching in the back window, screaming about how much he hated cops. I noped the fuck out, jumped in a cab, never went back to work or saw him again. If he isn't dead, or in jail for life I would be absolutely amazed. Edit. One detail I forgot to mention, is that before he went charging down the street, to beat up the cop car, Scooby and I had tried to hold him back. We had an arm each. And Brian basically hulked out of his shirt, ripping it down the back, and left the two of us each holding a torn half, as this short, heavily muscled and tattooed lunatic ran off topless to rampage. I once met a guy in county named Richard, he was in there for assaulting his mother, and I believe he was schizophrenic. He would be up late, and would yell out things such as, I'm the head of the Illuminati, I've been jacking off, and I'm feeling naughty also every time a guard came by to do rounds he would call out, thank you for protecting and serving, also thank you for my freedom I mean dude I hate to break it to you, but you probably won't be free for a while. I think it was the way he murdered this other guy. He didn't kill him straight away, he planned it over a few days, and used a weapon that made it very painful and bloody. Rumors were it was an axe, other rumors were it was a meat cleaver. It wasn't a case of dickhead killed my dog, so I beat him up and got an unlucky punch. It was very much premeditated. That's why he ended up in jail. He was also mad as a box of frogs. Not a prisoner, but a public defender who meets a lot of people in jail. A fellow I met once, or twice sticks with me. He had a DUI, and had some priors, so he had some jail time to do. He was going to be in for a few months. He was put on the sheriff's work crew on day 2. Usually it's a few weeks wait to earn that extra time off doing grunt work. By the second week he had sobered up, and was running a crew. 
the guy was big and muscular, and, when he wasn't drinking and smoking everything in sight, a really hard worker and great at directing the other workers. If it weren't for liquor, a regiment of that guy and I could invade Canada. My partner was in jail for selling weed. There was a guy there who was sentenced indefinitely, which is highly unusual in Australia. Murder you get 25 years give or take. He was not going to be given and end date to his sentence until he told police where his girlfriend's head was. Not prison, but was detained in a mental hospital for a 72 hour halt, ended up being 96 hours. There was a girl named Miriam who was anorexic, and not all there may be schizophrenic. She would sneak into our room and stare in my room at, and I about 3 feet away from our faces, her room was next to ours, and would get in trouble, after getting caught by the nurses doing the vital check rounds. I saw her doing, scribbles on the walls using the food she refused to eat, and other stuff, but never really bothered anyone. Sometimes she would go into episodes where she would refer to the nearest female as her cousin, and asking why repeatedly, and that's where I got the story, that her actual cousin would offer Miriam up to their uncle, so that the uncle would sexually abuse Miriam instead of her. She was never violent, just cried a lot, and had mood swings. I think about her a lot, and I miss her, and really hoping she's okay. Sure she was strange to me, because I didn't completely understand then what she was suffering. I regret not talking to her, maybe having a friend, even if temporarily, cold vised her pain. Even if for a little. Brian the bomber. He was addicted to crack, explosions, and hookers. He was also schizophrenic. He decided to impress a crack hoe. So he got a lot of gunpowder, and constructed a couple of large, 2000 black cat firecrackers and blew one up in her driveway. She wasn't impressed and called the cops. He then got drunk and went to a bar with the other firecracker and handed it to the town idiot who promptly set it on a cement block next to someone's new F-150 and let the two short fuse. It blasted the paint off the truck. The cops heard it and followed the mushroom cloud where they got him. They used robots to find all of his bomb making stuff in his house. Two years in prison. Another time, he was having difficulty getting an erection. So he bought a penis pump off the internet. He decided he didn't need to read the instructions, and managed to detach the vast deference from his balls. Over time they stretched his ball sack, until it hung very low. His parents were rich, but wouldn't accept his mental illness, and cut him off. Weird and tragic guy. Not me but a friend. I had a cellmate who talked in his sleep. My first night in that cell I woke up to I'm a ref asterisk cking murderer I'm gonna ref asterisk ckin kill you. I was in the top bunk, so I looked down and said, what's up man? He woke up and said, huh. He actually was an alright guy when he was awake, but I think he was dyslexic or something, because he kept on taking my sandals. I spent one night in a downtown Houston jail in 2008 which was during a particularly troubling time for the criminal justice system owing to widespread gang wars between relocated hurricane victims and locals. There was a contingent of rather large New Orleans gang members, not being presumptuous here, they told me, who started talking a wee bit of trash to some local gang members on the other side of our big communal holding cell. Everyone started kinda sizing each other up when all of a sudden this 80 year old homeless guy starts shitting slash grunting loudly in the corner of the room. I mean fucking loud. It was so jarring slash funny slash disgusting that everything sort of calmed down and we went about their business of sitting in jail. I met a lot of strange guys in prison, but I was in a lot of the mental health prisons when I was on state. Worst experience was in solitary at a high slash medium mental health camp. Easily the worst month of my life, we would regularly have guys scream profanities or racial slurs at each other for hours. Had at least one night, where two guys were going at each other from about 10 till 2 or 3. Don't even think they knew each other, just one guy wouldn't shut up, and the other took offense. Guys banging on doors for hours with their feet, heads, etc because they were pissed off would hear a strange sound coming through my wall occasionally, took me a couple days to realize my neighbor was jerking it every time the nurses would come around. Also had a couple of chronic masturbators, would turn around and glance at the phones and some guy would be furiously beating his meat, or to female guards, 
No crazy stories about any one individual person, but there are some fucking weirdos in prison. Surprise.